Growing the top 6 home remedies It is not essential to have a green thumb to grow home remedies. You can easily grow many herbs and plants. While it is easy to purchase these plants from a store, it is always better to grow your own. In this way, you know what goes into their growth. You are sure they will be free from chemical pesticides and herbicides. If you grow them inside, you can even have fresh herbs all year round. This section will only look at the top 6 herbs. These are aloe vera, chamomile, garlic, parsley, peppermint and rosemary. Aloe vera and aloe vera is a desert plant, although technically a herb. In its different varieties, it has become popular as a houseplant. Yet, the aloe vera is more than an interesting succulent. The leaves of this plant have a specific use. The gel within is used externally to treat burns, including sunburn and to help with the healing of cuts. The use of plants for these problems is simple. Break a leaf of the plant off and squeeze the gel form the segment onto the wound or burn. The gel dries on the wound, sore or burn creating a barrier against bacteria. Use the gel liberally without any side effects. Growing the plant is rarely a problem. Purchase a small plant. Transplant it into a larger pot, perhaps a window planter during the summer or a larger pot during the winter. Make sure it receives full sun and the temperatures remain above 40 F. Aloe vera is a succulent after all and enjoys the warmth and the sunlight. As the plant grows, it will add more leaves. Small, baby plants will appear. You can remove these when they have strong enough roots, plant them and have more aloe plants. Alternatively, you can let them hang together. Whatever your decision, the result will be large enough and plentiful enough plants to use in instances of cuts and burns. Chamomile Chamomile is a plant with anti-inflammatory and soothing properties. Usually ingested as a tea, chamomile has the ability to relax the drinker, soothing away any anxiety and stress. This member of the Compositi family is also great for helping you shake off insomnia and ease into sleep. The most popular genus of chamomile is German chamomile, A. Matricaria. This is an annual plant requiring replanting every year. In spring, scatter the seeds in beds of moist, but well-drained soil. Make sure the planting plots lie in a partially shaded area. You may want to clip a couple of times during the summer. You also need to watch out for weeds. If you prefer to avoid annual planting, you can opt to plant perennial varieties e.g. Anthemus nobilis. Unlike the German chamomile, these do not grow as tall. They creep along the ground. If you like the plant wilder and stronger, there is a form known as mayweed or stinking chamomile. All forms of chamomile are best served as a tea. Snip the stems and hang them to dry. You can then use immediately, storing any excess in dark, sealed containers for later use. While the tea is an excellent way to soothe frazzled nerves and calm upset stomachs, you must use with caution. Chamomile is a member of the daisy family. So, too, is ragweed. Therefore, if you have any allergies to ragweed, use chamomile with care. Garlic Garlic is a much-loved, yet much-maligned plant. This plant is hardy and it will grow in most types of soil. This common kitchen herb grows easily, not from seed but from the separation of the cloves. Take each clove from a head of garlic and plant it in a sunny spot. Garlic loves full sun. Keep the soil moist but never overwater the plants. When the flower stalk appears in early summer, cut it back. You need the energy to go to the bulb beneath the soil. Harvest the plant in late summer to achieve the most benefits possible. Clean the plants off and store them. Garlic is an antibiotic known since at least the time of the Egyptian pharaohs. It acts to fight off colds, stimulate digestion and is also good for whooping cough and asthma. Some tout garlic as having the ability to reduce high blood pressure and decrease cholesterol levels. You can eat the cloves raw or add to recipes. Some herbalists believe cooking decreases the powers of garlic. While some encourage the eating of a clove or two a day during cold season, never ingest more than 10 raw cloves daily. This could produce an allergic reaction or a toxic one. If you are breastfeeding, do not use. To do so could result in your baby having colic. Parsley Parsley is a common and popular biennial garden herb. Many use it as a garnish rather than for its medicinal properties. You can grow parsley indoors or outdoors. 
It is happy in a window box or a pot. In fact, parsley is a pot herb. You will need a deep pot, though. Parsley has a taproot and can grow quite tall. It depends upon the variety. It is frequently part of herb garden kits for indoor gardens. You can purchase parsley in seed form for spring planting. Try a seed tray or a plug tray indoors or, ideally, in a greenhouse, if you want to get an early start on the planting season. You can also opt for established seedlings from a nursery. Plant the seeds or seedlings in full sun or partial shade. Water, weed and wait 12 to 14 weeks until the plant is established. You can then begin to pluck or cut the leaves close to the base of the plant. This will encourage further growth and an ongoing supply of parsley. Parsley is rich in vitamin B and potassium. It is a good diuretic and helps alleviate gallbladder problems, including gallstones. Parsley has been chewed for centuries to help with bad breath and eating a few sprigs may also decrease your body odor. You can eat the roots, seeds and leaves. The leaves are the most popular part of the plant. Curly or moss parsley tends to be more bitter than the flat-leafed or Italian variety. Do not ingest if you are pregnant. You are also to avoid large amounts if you have kidney disease as it may increase the flow of urine. Peppermint This common garden herb provides the basis for a popular and soothing tea. Both the leaves and the stem of peppermint mentha piperita, are excellent sources of healing powers. It is one of the easiest plants to grow but very difficult to control. Peppermint, or any type of mint for that matter, quickly plots to take over a garden plot. You need to be vigilant and heartless in cutting back and rooting out any excursions beyond the specified boundaries. You need a site that is in full or partial sun. The best soil is one that is rich and drains well. Loam is best as it will retain water during the summer. Peppermint will quickly cease hold under these conditions and you will have trouble stopping it from invading all corners of your garden. When the plants are bountiful and display many leaves, do not be shy. Pick them off and use fresh. You can also dry them for later use. Make the leaves into a tea or in alcoholic or other refreshing drinks. Crush the leaves to release the soothing scent into the air. Chew on a leaf to freshen your breath. There are many different uses for peppermint. Peppermint is a versatile herb. It has long been popular as a means to ease digestive woes. A tea of the leaves helps the stomach and the mind relax. Releases gas and helps with such things as diarrhea, indigestion and menstrual cramps. Drinking a tea or releasing the scent may also act as a decongestant, reducing nasal inflammations. Some believe peppermint can decrease instances of bronchial restriction and headaches. Peppermint oil is effective in clearing up headaches. Preliminary research indicates this to be factual. You can also rub the oil on sore muscles. The oil has also acted as to numb sore teeth. In all instances, however, do not apply the oil without diluting it. Mix full-strength peppermint oil with a carrier oil. This can be olive oil or canola oil. It will decrease the harm factor but not negate the benefits. Peppermint is truly an all-purpose plant. If you look at the commercial use, even synthesized, you will have some idea of the power of peppermint. You find it as a flavor for gum and other candies. It is used in mouthwashes, toothpastes and other oral hygiene products. Peppermint is a handy herb to have around. Yet, there are precautions regarding its usage. Do not ingest the oil or essence. Pure peppermint oil may actually cause and not prevent indigestion and other stomach and digestive tract problems. In some instances, its relaxation of the sphincter muscle may increase problems of acid reflux and heartburn. Rosemary Rosemary Rosemarinus officinalis, is another popular kitchen herb. It is a spice and a medicine. Rosemary can aid you in your fight against bacteria, help you digest your food and even act to stimulate your thinking abilities. A perennial, rosemary is a plant you can grow from scratch or purchase complete. If you decide to buy a potted rosemary, be sure it is free from any chemicals. Unlike the other herbs mentioned, rosemary is a bushy plant. It prefers a well-drained, dry soil. It also likes the soil to be gritty, sandy, permitting the roots to breathe. You can grow more rosemary plants from taking cuttings off the bush. Use only flowerless stems. Place the cuttings in a moist, sandy and shady place. 
If you plant a bush, be sure you trim it back soon after planting and regularly thereafter. This will result in the production of strong, healthy shoots and perfectly oiled leaves. The fragrance from rubbing the leaves will be ideal. You will strip whatever leaves you want before storing them in a dark, shady place until they dry. You then use the leaves and stems to make a tea or tisane. Rosemary teas can be used internally or externally. Internally, it helps improve memory. It also aids in migraines and headaches. Externally, you can use rosemary tea to rinse your hair. It helps rid the scalp of dandruff and stimulates hair growth. While there are no known external problems, there are internal issues. Drinking too much rosemary tea may increase menstrual bleeding. Moreover, it is not to be taken during pregnancy. Conclusion There are many popular herbs you can grow inside and or outside. Each of them requires specific nutritional needs. Talk to a gardening expert to ensure you are supplying the right type of nutrients and conditions. This will allow the plant to achieve its maximum potential. Be sure you also know the exact variety of plant. Talk to an herbalist and or gardener to ensure the plant you are picking is the one you need. At the same time, discuss with a herbalist or cam doctor about the uses of the plant. Do your research on gardening, but do not neglect the other significant aspects. These include storage and preparation. Know ahead of time and completely understand the parts you will need to harvest. Make sure you follow storage methods correctly. Improper storage can result in the growth of mold and mildew on your plants. It can also decrease the medicinal benefits of the plants.